Junk, I'm a uh, fascinated by religion, even though I'm not the most religious person myself. And uh, this story is, um, I think, interesting on a whole bunch of levels. A priest in Arizona has resigned after incorrectly performing baptisms for decades, apparently derailing the right for thousands of people. According to uh, Marina Plofsky of USA Today, the Catholic Diocese of Phoenix, Phoenix on its website confirmed that Father Andres Aragno used the words, we baptize you in the, ma- in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, instead of the correct phrase, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit in English and Spanish. The diocese explained that the single incorrect word matters for worshipers because if it is not the community that baptizes a person and incorporates them into the Church of Christ, rather it is Christ and Christ alone who presides at all sacraments. Therefore, it is if, if it is Christ who baptizes, the diocese said, if you are baptized using the wrong words, that means your baptism is invalid and you are not baptized. Uh, baptisms usually involve individuals, typically infants having water poured on their foreheads and uh, sacred practices. It's a sacred practice for Catholics, such as communion, confirmation, and even marriage. Arango, the former pastor of St. Gregory Parish in Phoenix, just put out this statement. I deeply regret my error and how this has affected numerous people in your parish and elsewhere, he said in a statement. With the help of the Holy Spirit and in communion with the Diocese of Phoenix, I will dedicate my energy and full-time ministry to help remedy this and heal those affected. Again, he said, we instead of I. The diocese confirmed that the number of baptisms Arango has performed are apparently in the thousands. The Vatican's official orthodoxy office did indeed confirm that baptisms performed saying we instead of I are invalid. Bishop Thomas Olmsted of Phoenix said in a statement that he does not believe Father Andres had any intentions to harm the faithful or deprive them of the grace of baptism and the sacraments. On behalf of our local church, I too am sincerely sorry that this error has resulted in disruption of the sacraments, lives of a number of the faithful. I instead of we. Hmm. Wow. Um, it seems a little bit extreme to me, Jack. But I'm not Catholic, I haven't been baptized. Um, I suppose everyone's entitled to how they want their exact language or sacrament to be said. Yeah, Uh, yes, Uh, apparently syntax matters uh, to the almighty. Um, So, well, syntax of a different sort. Um, Okay, so let's break this down. Um, Of all the people that we have asked for apologies from, all the terrible people in the world that never apologized, that never had any consequences. This is the one guy who apologizes? This is the one guy that there's consequences for? Because he said we instead of I. Okay, now the main reason to do this story, guys, is because of the massive cultural differences that exist in this country today. And I've told you this many times, the biggest cultural differences is not among the races, not even necessarily among uh, the parties, although that is a significant one. It's age groups, because now a huge percentage of the young are atheists or don't belong to any organized religion. Whereas a huge percentage of older Americans, roughly 45 and above, are still very religious. So for the folks who are religious, this makes all the sense in the world. For the people who are not religious, we're all looking around going, wait, what? Are you serious? How could that possibly make a difference? So let me get this right. You got baptized and you led your life as a good Christian, Catholic, etc. And then you get up to heaven and God goes, tough break. Your priest that you didn't even know about 37 years ago, 77 years ago, said we instead of I, you didn't make it. That's the God you worship? That I stunned by that. I'm stunned by it. And I know that most religious people I think most religious people, but certainly a lot of religious people don't believe that, right? They believe in good deeds and they believe all these wonderful things and a lot of religious folks are the best in the business, if you will, (laughs) ironic, not in the business at all. But in helping the needy, helping the homeless, helping the poor, the hungry, etc., right? But there are a lot of people who take it very, very literally. And by the way, if you do take it literally, It's hard for us non-religious people to keep up, right? Because we as the community, the community cannot baptize. Christ can baptize, as David just read to you. But the priest isn't Christ, but but is he? 
Like, like for Catholics, that makes sense. For the rest of us, we're like, wait, what? And I tried to explain to my kids the other day because I want them to understand the different religions and, and cultures. And I'm like, I try to exp explain sacrament. It's the body of Christ and and that little wafer, and the wine is the the blood of Christ. And they're like, they drink the blood of Christ. I was like, I'm getting out of this conversation because I don't want to like I don't want to insult folks, right? But they think it's literal, but they know it's not literal. And David, I just literally don't get it. Well, I'm gonna say something that I, I think may, I hope it doesn't offend people, but I think, Jen, this goes beyond obviously just baptisms and Catholics. I think, look, in my own experience, I remember you know, growing up, we kept kosher in a Jewish household. And we were instructed that if somehow we mixed milk on a meat plate, we had to bury the plate in some dirt. And so my brothers and I thought, okay, great. So we would do this sometimes on purpose because it would drive our parents crazy and we would take the take the plate and put it in the plant because we thought that was kind of funny. Now, there's all sorts of arguments that were had over, should we really be bearing the plate? Should, is this melody better than another one at synagogue on Saturday? But there's some very like passionate debates that people of a very progressive community, at least I thought it was very progressive, but still they are deeply they deeply believe in some of these traditions or these institutions. And so they have their way of how things should be done. And so for those of us who say, oh, you know, why are those Catholics, why do they care about the difference between I versus we? I think every one of us in talking to people who are part of our own religious faith can find things that for those of us who are not so religious, we step back and say, who cares? Does, you know, if you're a good person, does it really matter if the plate is buried for three days as opposed to five days? Does it have to be deep in dirt? Does it really matter if it's this plate or that plate? Does it really matter if it's this melody or that melody and you stand facing the right way or not? I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, I think that's why so many of us who think, you know, whether there's a heaven or not, the purpose here on earth is, are you a good person? Yeah. Um, and so it, it becomes awfully hard to reconcile when you start opening this Pandora box of religion. There's all sorts of different ways, all sorts of different rabbit holes you can go down. So uh, the last time I did this, the New York Times called me anti-Muslim and anti-Semitic, uh, even though I was born Muslim, grew up Muslim, <laughs> my whole family's Muslim. Uh, but I want, but I'm going to do it again because I don't want people thinking it's just about Catholics or it's just about Christians. Okay, so uh, and and. I'm gonna use the same examples I used last time. So in, in Islam, a lot of people wear the skull cap, right? And they and and they pray a certain way, uh, et cetera, right? In in some forms of Orthodox Judaism, they still wear the 18th century, 19th century Russian outfits, right? They have the yep. giant hats, the big thick fur coats. And a lot of those guys live in Miami Beach. I don't know how they survive. Okay. And uh, my question is. Does God care that much about fashion? That he's like, oh, you got the right hat on, you're in. Oh, you were great your whole life, but you didn't accessorize well, so you're out. You got to go down to hell. Uh, you didn't even do anything wrong, but your priest, unbeknownst to you because you were a baby, said we instead of I. You didn't make it because God is obsessed with grammar. Really? Really? So I'm not questioning your faith. I'm questioning the fundamentalist strict interpretation of these religions. I think that can't possibly be true, and I hope you agree. So I'm trying to bridge that cultural divide, and I'm sure I'll be called every name in the book because of it. Well, and I, and I hope, and I think we've done it here. I hope we can all say, look, we should show some empathy for people who are, in my view, stuck. In this sort of thing where I versus we matters, I would say stuck for them, it's not being stuck, it's a choice they make. Well, I feel badly that their life and their faith might be questioned internally by themselves or members of their family, members of their community because of what seems like an innocent mistake. And for people who are that caught up on so doctrinaire on things have to be done a certain way, I think it's probably pretty tough going through life that way where you're so caught up on such such specificity for something that seems you know you were you were trying to get baptized you were doing something that you thought was a good thing you yeah. weren't hurting anybody yeah and and by the way how do you know if god wants you to in the case of muslims have a headdress where you can see your face or a headdress where you can't see your face or not have a headdress at all and by the way it's the same language i know i studied it that applies to men and women so why don't the men have the headdress and so 
If that's the minutia that God is going to judge you on, we're all in a lot right. of trouble. <laughs> right. And I think that we can all agree on. Okay. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.